Coach Stewart, this is the last one of the year. It's over, so I was thinking maybe we'll reflect back a little bit on the year. This past weekend, we had a couple losses. We won't talk too much about that. Uh, I don't think it was, whatever, it, it happened. 6-1 and 6-2, any thoughts at all on the weekend? Uh, you know, just one of those things competing for 60 minutes. Uh, you know, we were in that first game for quite a while. We were out chancing them, I thought, for a long period of time. And and I think it was 2-1 when Nate, when Nate got hurt. That was his first game back. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of a raw deal for him. And I think that kind of deflated the bench on Saturday night. And then Sunday, we just, just a bad start. I think it was 5-1 halfway through the game. And then it ended only 6-1. So the second half wasn't bad, but too late. Bummer. Yeah, we have a chat coming up with Nate a little further on in the show and uh, talk about bad luck for that. <laughs> like that guy could not catch a break this year. Yeah, it's unfortunate, the concussion and then, yeah, and then yeah. come back for a game and um, separate his shoulder, yeah. Yeah, kind of part of our billet family. So we got to know him and great great guy and great kid. And so it was really kind of a bummer that uh, went the way it did. Yeah, it was. I know he appreciated the opportunity to play here too. So yeah. it was good for us and good for him as well. And good to, you know, for a Winnipeg kid to maybe spread the word that there's a lot of good up here and things yeah. other than hockey up here too. I get, he got to experience some of the lake life with you guys and that, so. Yeah, for sure. He, he blended in with us. Yeah, we did a lot of that and it seemed like he really enjoyed it. His dad was up even and so we took him out as well. And, uh, and you're right, for them to spread the word that but it's a it's a good fun place to be it can't hurt at all yeah exactly yeah looking back on the year not just this past weekend but any highlights from this year that uh, stick out for you on a top of the mind uh the handful of the saturday night wins and especially that one against the thrashers being uh I think we were down by two or three goals at one point in that game. So to make the comeback on a Saturday night against a, a good team, that's one yeah. probably one of the highlights for sure. Things that stick out, absolutely. We've got uh, some kids that are going to take that experience and take this year's experience and move on. So some playing with NCN, going all different places. Do you have some advice for, for those kids? What do you tell them when, you know, you obviously get the calls to, to sign off on them moving or, you know, guys are talking about playing next year. What's some of the things that you tell them? Um, don't waste your off season. Just being lazy playing video games because it's it, it's not like that anymore. It's not the old days where you <laughs> where you show up two weeks early and start jogging and, and skating and you're good in two weeks. Uh, and you can tell the kids that do and don't. And I've seen kids that come to camp and look really good one year and then the next year they get complacent and they don't look good. And I've seen ones miss the team because of that. Wow. So it is good advice. And you're right, it should never be named training camp anymore. Like back 40 years ago, you're right, you came there to get in shape. Now you're not, there's no training. No, the expectation is for you to come in shape. So if you don't, well, then that's kind of a minus already. And same piece of advice, I'm guessing, for the kids. If there's some people watching that are thinking they're going to try out, they're going to be looking at being on the team next year. What's some of your advice for them between now and the day that they're sitting in a dressing room like this one? Well, obviously, the off-season off, uh, off training. And, um, you know, uh, the NHL goes on till what, June something? Watch some hockey. Learn, watch the guy that plays your position or your favorite player and see what they do and then try to emulate it out on the ice because, I mean... At the end of the day, you can only learn, right? Yeah, great, great advice. I mean, you can almost liken that a little bit to rock stars do the same thing, right? They all watch their favorite bands and they all go to the shows because that's that's where you learn. Yeah, exactly. How, true. How, how, to, how to be a performer. Um, anything stand out stats wise on the year? I know you're a stats guy. There was there probably wasn't a bunch of those, but any anything at all that sticks out for you? Uh, I don't know about sticks out. Uh, it was a tough year in the stat department last year. There was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of really good ones to to yeah. throw out there this year. You know, I think the big thing this year is just realizing that there were so many 15 and 16 year olds on the team, and all those 15 year olds came without Bantam AAA experience because there was no Bantam AAA team last year. So you could see the adjustment took longer, I think, for some of them, yeah. and and. Um, I mean, that's not a stat, but that's, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean. Kind of, kind of a thought on the year. And I mean, building on that, any of those kids uh, that are sticking out for you that you think are going to make a bigger impact next year? Any other kids that as they're moving on, maybe uh, you think we're going to be surprised to see in a couple years are really doing well? Well, I think uh, looking up front, uh, Isaac Tomchuk's energy, if he can pull a little more goal scoring ability or that energy, that'd be super. I mean, Dalen, you know, he he went up and down during the season, you know, yeah. like the triple, <laughs> like Isaac played uh, for Parkland last year, actually. So he played triple A, right? Uh, Dalen had like, a, he had a decent start and then he had a lull for a little while and he's found it again lately. So, I mean, he's got a scoring touch. He's up to eight goals now, which is decent for a 15 year old, really. Uh, and then you go on the back and you look at, uh, 
Isaac and Reed. I mean, two 15-year-old D-men, one's got, I think Reed's got 23 points and Isaac's got about 15. That's a pretty good, yeah. for a 15-year-old D-man, those are actually good numbers, yeah. Yeah, and, and lots of uh, lots of runway in front of those guys to just keep getting bigger and stronger and to make an impact. Well, and a ton of ice time too, right? So they're going to come in with a load of experience in all situations, like, which, you know, isn't the norm actually. So it's it's it'll be huge for them next year. Yeah. Uh, just before we, we let you go, just a little mention, I think, of those guys that are off to the Canada Games right now. And we're going to talk to Russell in a few minutes about his experience at the Arctic Winter Games. I'm Amazing for those guys. Yeah, I mean, that, the Arctic Winter Games, uh, Russell Matu, Prime, Panic, and Gregory Wiseman were representing uh, Nunavut, and about six other former North Stars were playing for the team too. Tucker St. John, oh, wow. yeah. Kobe Tanyuk, Kobe Connolly, Justin Azakirik, uh, I'm forgetting someone. <laughs> there was a bunch of others that had tried out. Um, so it was good to see all the North Star representation there. And then now, now Prime and Greg are both headed to Canada Games. We'll miss them this week. And obviously, Greg being our leading goal scorer and Prime our leading point getter. <laughs> so that's, that's a tough, uh, tough loss for us. But uh, yeah. But good news for the Canada Games team. Yeah, hopefully they can put a good show on there for them. Yeah. Best of luck this weekend, coach. And thanks for everything this year. It's been great, uh, great chatting as we do it. And uh, that's it. Maybe we'll see you back here next year. Maybe. Grandma Krentz, hi. <laughs> what a way to finish it. <laughs>